Good morning. Welcome to the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. This is MT Clark, and this little meeting is more than a Zoom meeting. It's a Bible study, and it's a little program that we produce called Bible Study with the Sincotis, as we're joined today by Arthur and Susanna Sincotti, and also my lovely wife, Tammy Lynn Clark, uh, for today's study that Arthur has sent <laughs> and authored uh, called The Fear of the Lord versus the joy of the lord so we, we take those two on and, and uh, duke it out on super bowl sunday yeah oh my goodness um, yeah, yeah. Good morning oh, and welcome arthur and everyone to our study and say yes. welcome god bless you good morning welcome. i just wanted to point out to our listeners and viewers that just before we got on started the recording uh, Arthur was telling about his great uh, win as being this wonderful Bible scholar. That's right. Uh, That's right. Brains oh. and heart and knows all the Bible, and he's just like, yeah. yes, yes, I am. I'm proud. So I guess to be proud I be a co-host with the the Bible, the Bible. What is it, Rockwell and Bible Institute Jeopardy champion? From Friday evening, yeah. Arthur apparently took it home with a total of 3,900 points uh, to shut everyone down. And to oh, feeling down. very competitive. Oh, that's no. that's why now this person. we're in trouble tonight. That he was the that, last um, man standing. Rebecca Ham was chasing me down. Yeah. And she's, she's another a graduate herself. Bible. Yes. She's, a, she's an alumni. She's oh. Rock Solid Bible Institute. So uh, something to be said for that, definitely. Yeah. So. So that uh, I'm, I don't know that that instigated the the study as though we've got some uh, contest going on between the two. But uh, I was very competitive Friday night, and it felt it felt good. I haven't done something like that in in ages. It was really fun. What a great time! Mm -hmm. So let's uh, open in prayer. Lord, yeah. we uh, bless you and honor you this morning. We praise you and thank you for gathering us here together. This small gathering is. Uh, as Mark always expresses it, is more than enough to uh, initiate your presence and to um, bless you, Lord God, with our uh, attention, with our praise, with our um, delving into your word. Uh, it's the desire of our hearts that indeed we would uh, know you more intimately, Lord God, just as you um, uh, tell us in in. In John's gospel, this is eternal life, to know God and Jesus Christ who he had sent. And this is our desire as we as we peer into your word and we listen to one another's hearts and our expressions, we get glimpses of you. And it's uh, most satisfying to our souls as we uh, seek to navigate our way through this life. You give us your Holy Spirit and your spirit is present here this morning, Lord God, leading us and guiding us. Uh, we pray that our time together is honoring to you and gives you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So these two, um, fear and joy, you know, they would seem to be diamet diametrically uh, opposed uh, to one another. And yet, here in probably one of the greatest moments in human history, in the history of the universe, at the resurrection, we see the two of them have been uh, melded together in one verse. Mm. In Matthew 28, 8, it says, And they departed from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word. So uh, how does that happen in the human experience, that fear and joy are present at the same time? And so we're going to examine some of the dynamics of each human emotion, each emotion here, because they're spoken of frequently in Scripture, and it's very important. And so we want to come to uh, put it under the microscope, understand more clearly. I said that these two, express, uh, these two uh, expressive human emotions would seem to be at odds with each other. In the above verse, we see fear and joy persisting together in the same experience. It shouldn't surprise us that it's said of the women at the tomb. 
What? away. Wow, excuse yeah. me. Okay, excuse me. Arthur. <laughs> You're gonna have some fear of the Lord here. Yeah. Well, you know, I that's, mean that's, that's Peter cool. and, and Peter and John go to the tomb and they're just like, okay. Yeah, yeah the men right, run so. in, the women run out. Is that it? Yeah, yeah but uh is <laughs> the women I didn't say I'm gonna get in trouble, trouble for it. They all are <laughs> have this fear and joy going on at the same time and and personally i think it's beautiful you know i, I think uh, uh peter and john should have had a little bit more of that they were just pretty <clears throat> kind of sounded kind of stoic and matter of fact about the whole event but again in the greatest event in all human history and here we have fear and joy happening today so today we're going to uh, intend to explore as i said the dynamics of these two emotions as foretold in scripture our emotional self is certainly of consequence to god mm -hmm. because he created us as such you know he created us as emotional beings mm -hmm. and our feelings are an important mechanism that we use to engage the world around us untethered both can be damaging <laughs> we yes. can immediately think of examples of both in scripture and our personal lives when uh, untethered fear or untethered joy uh, can can be uh, harmful. And yet scripture speaks of both in useful and positive and life-giving fashions. Mm -hmm. so these, these are important human emotions uh, and uh, they bring a, a, a sort of richness uh, to life. Uh, that abundant life that Jesus spoke of in John 10, 10 is filled with fear and joy, right? And uh, uh, sometimes we feel like we're on a roller coaster of, of fear and joy. And we often speak about how joy can be a thread, uh, even through fear, that uh, we often speak of joy in contrast to happiness, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, happiness happiness can, can come and go and can be infiltrated by fear, but joy... Ha actually has the the ability and the capacity to to uh, just move right through human experiences it's a it's a deep-seated thing uh that is woven into our um uh our soul uh, but in a scriptural context you know we see that joy is often expressed in in ways that are expressed are expressive it's not just kind of like uh well, I'm, I'm going through this bad time, but I have the, I have joy. And so we're going to look at both words. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a positive sense, we often read how the fear of the Lord is, mo is most commonly associated with the verses that say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. I didn't give a scripture reference there because it's like all over Psalms and Proverbs. You know, it's mm -hmm. there are there are several scripture references where this is echoed. And we often like to use a term, the, the, the double enunciation of deity, or in, in this case, I can think of at least three places. So when something is repeated in scripture that has special emphasis, that's something that we should really pay attention to. Not that we don't pay attention to all the rest, but oftentimes, so when, when Jesus says in the Gospels, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, this is a, uh, this is a mark of emphasis. And the word fear, ira, uh, is definitely, is defined in Strong's, morally uh, reverence, dread, full, exceedingly fearful. And most evangelicals in this verse, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, uh, hyperfixate on reverence, since uh, <clears throat> dread is not something we like to associate with our New Testament heavenly daddy, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we've, we've never seen him face to face. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, right, and those who have, when you read the scriptures, they usually fall down like dead men, or yeah. they freak out, or they faint, uh, or they telling you get consumed by whatever. But I think, I think that there's, you know, from a human perspective, from a, an earthly perspective, it. I, I do 
tend to go towards the reverence because you know you you, you don't want to incur the anger or the the wrath of a parent you know you don't want to you know upset a parent if you're as a child you want them to you know to love you and to be be there for you but sometimes you do something wrong and you're going to get you know the consequences of that and that may tell you well maybe i shouldn't do that again uh you know the old don't touch the stove it's hot and then he goes over and touches the stove and says, oh, gosh, it's hot. Now you have <laughs> to deal with the burned finger. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's good to have that kind of fear because I think it makes you want to, to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I, think that, I think in our society today, you know, as a, as a teacher in Timmy Land, I'm sure you see this too, there tends to be an attitude that there's no consequence for my behavior. So I can do whatever the heck I want. Mm. I can push a kid down in the playground. I can, you know, kick, you know, the, the teacher. I can throw the, the food back at the cafeteria lady, you know, and there's no consequence. There's no consequence. So in, there's no fear in the person as to why I shouldn't do that behavior. It's just that I can do it. Mm. Yeah, right. I mean, Tammy Lynn just got Boys Town training where where that's what they try to emphasize, I believe, where you try to make a consequence to direct their behavior, correct? Mm. Wow. <laughs> Can I weigh in on that? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't go to the training my wife did, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But she, she, well, <laughs> And, and the reasons why uh, evangelicals de defect towards that view is is not uh, Pollyanna. It, should, it really isn't. It's it's rooted in Scripture. Uh, right. First, I didn't list the reference, but First John, in chapter four, <clears throat> seventeen says, "Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so we are in this world." And then it goes on in 18 to say, there is no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out, perfect love. Uh, perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Um, we love him because he first uh, loved us. So, <clears throat> uh, yes, fear has tor torment. And John goes on elsewhere in this uh, epistle to say, God is love. So, um, we again, we see that uh, fear has something. There's this, there's something in there that that is causing a division or a separation uh, in our love relationship with God. Uh, elsewhere in First or Second Timothy, I can never remember which uh, one seven. We're not. We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a, a sound mind. So these are some of the dimensions of, of fear. But whenever we see something in scripture that looks like a contradiction, oh, how, how, do, we, how do we reconcile these things? So there's, you know, uh, uh, there is no fear in love, yet we're called to love God. And then we, we jump to the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. How do we reconcile all these thoughts about, about the uh very natural human emotion of, of fear. And so uh, the fear of the Lord comes out a lot in scripture is, uh, well, uh, as, as a consequence of not knowing the Lord, um, you know, basically that mm -hmm. the instances of me and Tammy Lynn have been reading through the old Testament for, for a while now. And you see instances where people are corrected, uh, quite sharply uh like the sons of Korah get swallowed up by the earth when they decide that they can they can be just as much of a minister to the lord as as moses is yeah. and um you know miriam uh you know tries to step out and is afflicted with leprosy um, yes you know sharply you know very quickly and nadab and abihu uh you know are are, are burned uh burned alive because they offer strange fire they, they don't follow right. the lord's holy set apart standards 
and they're taught, you know, uh, the, the nation of Israel is taught again and again and again, that's not how we do things. And, you know, yeah. basically there's great consequences for, for God's people to act like God's people and to know, uh, you know, to be humble and to know the Lord's standards and the way he operates. Because when you do, there's yep. safety and there's protection and there's provision. Um, so it's not, you know, you better watch what I do. It's, it's, I'm going to, I'm, you're my people. I'm going to bless you. But if you show that, me that you're not my people or not behaving like my people, you know, I'll well, treat you like an outsider, which is someone who rejects me. And, and, you know, that's something to be worried about. And, you know, as you point out in the study, Matthew uh, 10, 28, where Jesus, you know, points out that you should fear the Lord, the one who can send you to hell. There are serious consequences for not being in a relationship with the Lord. And, right. um, it's out of love that he's warning us and telling us to to draw close. Uh, so yeah. we're, not, we're not found separated from his love. Yeah. Uh, another example uh, similar to the three that you posed in the Old Testament uh, is Ananias and Sapphira nice. in the New Testament. In the New Testament, and here is a, a clear case of uh, disobedience, uh, not uh, uh, being obedient to the things of God, clearly lying to the Holy Spirit. And that whole narrative goes on to say, then fear came upon every soul and many uh, wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, there's, a, there's a tension here. You know, when, when two parishioners drop dead because they, they lie, lie to the Holy Spirit, um, there's a reverent fear. And there's a fear, fear, you know, there's a fear. Uh, we're just yeah. afraid. Um, and um, yeah. Our God is, a, is an all consuming fire mm -hmm. and he is not to be um, uh, toyed with mm -hmm. or <clears throat> thought of casually. A couple of weeks ago, we did a study where we were talking about, you know, the sanctuary and how sometimes the pendulum f f goes too far in our approach to God in worship and in the house of god mm -hmm. where you know in some churches people are very casual and flippant and and not intentional non-intentional in in the uh in in the house of god mm -hmm. uh, and, and where in others it, it goes too far you know it's mm -hmm. it's it, it it's too over, strict, over, it's over too, rev, too strict too reverent to too, this yeah i remember we were serving um for a season in an Orthodox church. And one of the, the, the jobs that we took over was cleaning the sanctuary, you know, vacuuming and dusting and cleaning. Yeah. But I was strictly, strictly told I could not go up onto the altar. I could not go behind the, the royal gates. Um, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't vacuum up there. I, Arthur had to. A woman, a woman could not, a man, man could. could not. So, yeah. I mean, you know, Sometimes you wonder, you think, well, that's kind of silly. What if there's no one else? I guess then for Sunday morning, the back there will be dirty because uh, you wouldn't allow me to go and clean. Yeah. But again, there there are there are good reasons to have rules, and there are good reasons to follow them, if for nothing more than to just recognize that that there are there are the right way of doing things and the wrong way of doing things. Yeah. No matter how small in life it may be, such as cleaning or vacuuming a rug. Um, and the kingdom of God is about authority. And Susanna honored that. But in retrospect, or even at the time, we rather recognized it as the precepts of men. Right. So this was not, you know, this was not some holy spiritual mumbo jumbo that there was something going on back there Susanna is a, a, a child of God and has as much right to come into the presence of God as, as anybody else hmm. but you know we do we do um, respect uh, other uh, traditions and and you know not uh, up to you know up to a degree if it's if it's just really unbiblical ungodly and uh, offensive um 
no, we can't respect that. We can't come alongside that. We can't celebrate uh, those those things because, you know, man has an unlimited capacity we have of dovetailing all kinds of foolishness into the Word of God. And, yeah. you know, when you think of the extra biblical books and the Book of Mormons and the, you know, and, and, just, and the Jehovah Witnesses and everybody else's holy books, like, you know, let's... Let's just take a deep breath and stop, okay? And let's just consider the uh, what we have before us mm -hmm. genuinely. Stop looking for loopholes. Yeah. Anyway, that's a that's a whole rabbit trail. I did say that as as uh, Mark pointed out that we read in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus, who knows the Father. <laughs> Right it says, and do not fear those who kill the body and cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And, and so this is weighty. This is eternity we're talking about. And mm. uh, of course, we're going to put up a red flag, of course, with those who are have their heels dug into eternal salvation or you know, once saved or always saved, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think we should always have a healthy fear. I, I think we should always have a healthy fear that um, uh, uh, we never merited heaven, okay? And, uh, uh, and that we should always be, you know, I always make a point in these podcasts often to say that we should be living a lifestyle of repentance and we should be putting our own lives under the microscope or hold at least or, or best, actually, not at least, but at best, holding them in front of the mirror of God's word constantly mm -hmm. um, asking God, Psalm 139, if there be any wicked way in me, Lord, in me. Mm -hmm. We're not running around looking for the hair and the egg in everybody else's breakfast uh, uh, plate or um, the log in everybody else's eye until we've sufficiently, genuinely sufficiently dealt with the log in our own. And I think that that's what, what um, gets us to that point where Jesus says, you know, when people come, there'll be certain groups that'll say, you know, we did this and we did that in your name, and he'll look at them and say, yeah. okay, enter into the joy of your, of, of your salvation. Or right. he's going to say, apart from me, I never knew you. Yeah. There has to be, a, you know, you, it's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle yeah. of knowing and doing and yeah. recognizing your your own reverence and fear of, of what the Lord can and cannot do for you. Right. Or what you can and cannot do for yourself. Um, but it, like Mark, just I saw Mark, you know, go, mm -hmm. and Arthur says mm -hmm. you can't merit. You can't merit. You can't win it. You can't earn it. You can't. It's a gift. But you still have to work through it. And get better and better as you go you can't just sit back on your 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 haunches and say okay i've, I've done that and now yeah. said the prayer and now i'm saved and now i'm going you know going to heaven and do nothing else i mean the book of james is replete with all that kind of stuff of you know show me your faith without works and i'll show you my faith with by my works so it's, it's a balance again my favorite word is balance yeah you read the back of the thing didn't you no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for all, uh, for every indication, in this verse in in Matthew ten, uh, it seems as though Jesus is talking to the to the twelve. You know, this isn't the Sermon on the Mount. He's talking to his disciples. Nice. So uh, again, it's like, boys, you're with me. You're confident. This is a good thing, but let me put a, a check in your spirit here for a moment. All yeah, right? there's a. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, the one of the disciples was Judas. Uh, and, yeah, that's right. At the time, exactly. Um, well said. So there's that, uh, and, um, and apparently he didn't get the memo. And the latest um, release from uh, the Chosen season four in theaters now. Um, <laughs> one of the scenes. One of the scenes um, has Judas sort of being matter of fact about, hey, why don't we? Why do we have to do things the way we're doing them? And Simon the Zealot <laughs> uh, is telling him, telling him that's the way Jesus is doing it. And he's teaching us something yeah. through these things. And it yeah. doesn't necessarily make sense to you right now, but we're to do things his way. Um, right. 
to to learn and we learn something through the even the simple things um he shows them how to you know wash clothes or whatever and how it's uh, it, a rigorous task of you know moving the cloth and slapping it against rocks and you know doing all this stuff and judas is like yeah yeah but you know let's you know let's get on with the kingdom of god basically you know he wanted to institute the government um and take over you know uh right. how they're positing it and it just shows that th that there's a lack of growth and a lack of faith there even you know early on that there is there we that we that we need to grow in our faith and trust um mm -hmm. trust the lord's plan in his ways instead of ours and uh if you don't have the fear which didn't seem you know i'm he seemed awfully um you know awestruck at first but after following for a while it was you know okay you know the the, the fear of the lord seemed to be gone and mm -hmm. um and 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 it, it shows you know basically when your sure. heart is far from the lord you know right it comes it comes to pass well i i also think that there's a there's a sense of and in our pentecostal kind of setting and everything the, the easy gospel kind of sort you know come to jesus and everything will be fine you know you, you'll get a good job you'll have a good wife you'll have great kids you'll have house and your cars dog, and your dog will come back to life you know, whatever you know that's somebody you know, as somebody who does freedom freedom ministry where i'm trying to teach people okay. to grow in their faith and mature mature you know um i am free thanks and you know um you know what is the saying you know uh i have i have the peace of the lord well somebody tell your face or whatever you know, because, okay. you know, because, right. because you're you're and and that like you said that easy gospel sometimes is like i i got it jesus paid for my sins the end like he's calling us to and the upward call of christ is to surrender to him all the aspects of our life and to serve his kingdom only and uh, you know and to walk in the spirit and experience the fruit of the spirit and if you're right. closed off to reading his word or serving his church or forgiving your neighbor or you know crucifying the flesh or any one you know any one of a, a number of things that could help us to grow um you know you, you have to wonder if if you've lost both both the fear of the lord and the joy of the lord you know uh, yeah. that's it when you stay in that easy gospel eventually go yeah yeah i know and there's no fear and uh, unfortunately there's little or no joy and right. uh, he right. calls us to follow him and to keep moving forward in our faith because there's more to know about god there's more to experience uh when you come into line with him and when you follow him there's the well, you know it's what's next what's happening next and what do i have to learn next? and it's it's really an infinite god will teach you an infinite number of things about mm -hmm. you know what you don't know and how you live in denial and you know how how you can grow and, and be more loving you know that's one that's one standard that is sometimes uh left out you know and i've heard it a few times uh from different teachers saying you know if you're not growing in the you know and being a more loving person year after year you know you have to wonder if you're you know walking with god mm -hmm. if you're not being challenged you know because what i was thinking is you know people get told when you come to jesus everything gets is great but that's not necessarily the truth because of course Satan has another plan and he's going to come, he's going to throw, you know, throw you some, some curveballs and some yeah, roadblocks. Right. And then you'll suffer, you'll be suffering and say, oh, everything's good. Everything's yeah, good. Yeah, and some of the things you suffer, your own consequences and you don't realize, and you're just sort of living in denial. I'm saying, praise the Lord. And, you know, meanwhile, I'm what? Or, or right. Or you do the thing where you say this, this Jesus stuff is not for me. You know, it doesn't right. work and, I, and you walk away. Yeah. Yeah. This is where it gets complicated. Yes. And uh, um, Paul said in Second Corinthians, I, I fear that you've been corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel. Right. And this is where we dovetail all kinds of complication, complicated theology into the mix. Uh, um, 
you know, Jesus boiled the Ten Commandments down to two, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, uh, but we could layer that with all kinds of qualifications. You know, how do I love my neighbor? You know, you haven't met my neighbor. Right. <laughs> as, as a lawyer, you know, a lawyer and, in the Bible said, who is my neighbor? Let who me. is my neighbor? I do love my neighbor. It's my wife and kids that I'm having a problem with. You know, it's just all kinds of qualifications that we we layer the commandments and, uh, 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 and the ways of, of God with. And uh, we should be careful and circumspect about, about doing that. Right. Uh, uh, taking Jesus at, at at his word is is powerful, and um, I just spent a few days with a young man who does that. Uh, yeah, just say good. just say that he he does have both hands. He has not cut his hands off because Jesus said that if your hand leads you to sin, then you should cut it off and throw it. And he has out. and he has both eyes. Too. So I don't. I, I'm not sure how far out he's taking this thing, but he is actually very vigilant towards obedience, and uh, I'm, you know, I, I appreciate that in him. But we even have to be careful about that. You know, uh, Wesley has a great um, saying. If I can find it, it was in my it was in the picture file. Uh, I get, I had it up because I looked at it last night. Uh, John Wesley has a, 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 but a saying that, that really grounds me. It says, orthodoxy or right opinion is at best a very slender part of religion. Though right tempers cannot subsist without right opinions, yet right opinions may subsist without right tempers. There may be a right opinion of God without either love or one right temper towards him. Satan is proof of this. Mm. Mm. Satan is totally orthodox. He knows the Bible. He, I'm not saying that he's orthodox in the sense that he obeys, but he's totally orthodox in the sense that he knows. And um, it knows it with, with great perfection and tedium. And yet uh, he has no love for God and demonstrates that the way he wreaks havoc amongst God's, uh, the apple of his eye. So uh, we go on to say here that uh, sometimes, as we often say, the pendulum of our thinking travels too far in one direction or the other. Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's noteworthy to point out that the fear of the Lord is associated with uh, wisdom in, in the scripture. Uh, at least in many of the Old Testament passages that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 34, 11, it says, Come, you children, and listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So, again, this, this teaching dynamic is uh, has to do with information or wisdom or knowledge and things of that sort, mm -hmm. and it's associated with the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, that psalm goes on to give some instructions and some promises, too. So... Uh, let's talk about the joy of the Lord and our, um, uh, you know, go to verse. The joy of the Lord is the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Uh, we see from Nehemiah uh, 8, 10. And in this verse, the assembly of Israel is actually being rebuked by Nehemiah and Ezra and the Levites who taught the people uh, uh, because uh, after hearing the, the after hearing the reading of the law, they wept and sorrowed because of their sin. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Ezra or the, the Levites, or whoever is speaking, it's not clear, says, do, do not sorrow. The whole verse goes on to say, for do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still, for this day is holy, do not be grieved. Mm -hmm. So um, once again, there's an interesting dynamic there. Uh, there's a scripture the, in, in, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Uh, and it's interesting how we read in the beginning of Nehemiah that Nehemiah 
was in in essence risking his own life coming before the king with a sorrowful face and 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 the king he was the king's cupbearer and he he came and the king actually questioned him on that and it was you know it it, it could have gone badly but the king you know reached out in, in compassion asking what what was what was the trouble so um, there's fullness of joy in, in, in the presence of God. And when we come into the house of the Lord, uh, it, there should be an atmosphere of joy. Uh, it's something I, I, I appreciate about Rock Solid Church, that there is a, 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 a joyful um, atmosphere in worship, wow. even in, uh, uh, in between during uh, meet and greet times and all the, the socializing that goes on. There's a real effervescence. And as in stark contrast to some environments who, you know, we're not here to be critical of any body or any one expression, right. but some environments that are just so weighty and uh, just uh, uh, oppressive. I, I've often told the story <laughs> that as a kid going to Catholic church and that, you know, it says in the, in, in the missile with the missalette, which you're given in the pew to that you can follow along and read. It says that when the, when the speak, when the priest speaks, it, his title is given as celebrant because he's celebrating the mass. And as a little kid, I'm saying to myself, Oh, this is a celebration. And of course, as a little kid, I'm saying to myself, this doesn't seem like a celebration. Mm. You know, this seems like a drudgery and a monotony, and um, it, it it doesn't really have the trappings of, of a celebration. The people here look kind of morose and uh, unhappy and uh, uh, anxious to leave and all, all of the above. You know, I think one of the things that, one of the hallmarks of, of a healthy church, not that I am putting together a, a laundry list or a purveyor of such things, but Personally, I think one of the health uh, uh, hallmarks of a healthy church is people don't want to leave afterwards. Mm. You know, you got some deacon standing around waiting to lock the doors and he's looking at his watch. He, he's come on, folks, let's go. And people are chatting or people are praying together or people are, you know, this that we in old Pentecost, we used to call it the afterglow. You know, the afterglow, of the Sunday night service sometimes will go on till midnight. People are just still, yeah, don't real, until you know, there's a real dimension to worship when that's the joy of the Lord is allowed to yeah. allowed to flow, and I agree. spirit is allowed to come out and to you know, lie and live in your hearts and minds and in your bodies. You know, we're to celebrate with our hands and our voices and. You know, and you know that's that's something I you know I I really came to learn and, and love at Rock Solid Church and it's something you know when you when you understand um, that aspect of the joy of the Lord and the strength that you can have through expressing it through worship and praise it's 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 a discipline and it's and it's it becomes part of your walk and you take it everywhere you go. And you yeah. realize that some people don't get it, even amongst crowds that have, you know, upbeat worship or whatever. You know, there's a there's a dimension of um, devotion and love and, uh, you know, effort or holy zeal or whatever um, that isn't necessarily there in the in the music. It's it's through the spirit um, yeah. in you and the heart you have um mm -hmm. that's allowed to to be expressed um and that's just driven by the holy spirit and the joy of the lord um and it really does empower you and i always point to um you know <laughs> the 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 story in the old testament about david and ziklag and losing you know the <laughs> they get raided and everything gets stolen or their wives and children are stolen and they're ready to kill david and he strengthens himself in the Lord, and you know, yeah. he's the psal he's the psalmist. You know, he's the he's the songwriter, he's For the sure. warrior. Yeah. And you know, 
it, it challenges our masculinity too that he was he was this man of men and one of the yeah. things he did was sing and you can go in the congregations even amongst the uh you know on fire pentecostals and see people that are you know totally disengaged uh, standing amongst right. uh, st standing amongst the worship and they're yeah. not entering in and they're not they're not part of it they've they've removed themselves they're separated from it and right. um the, it's really it's really sad because mm -hmm. they might understand have some understanding of the holiness of the lord but they they miss the joy they might have the fear of the lord but they they don't they don't live in the joy of the lord and the joy is one of the fruit of the spirit yes um, yep you know, that's what we're directed to do and uh yeah. you know throughout scripture and ephesians uh you know um they're we're told to sing sing to one another and if you're not singing man you're missing something and you know in the freedom in christ course where i encourage people to connect to god and to repent and to get free of all the, the baggage in their past um I direct the men to to draw into a conversational life with the Lord in prayer and to, you know, to consider telling the Lord you love him, um, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and to and to That's use worship as part of your you know, your spiritual walk, because it'll open up the the heart that needs to be transformed. You know, it'll take the heart of stone and uh, make it a heart of flesh. Um and, but you have to you have to go there and sometimes there's a block you know from our past where we relate god to the suffering that we've encountered and that fear of the lord is too strong to to trust right. the lord. um mm -hmm. you know, be honest before him and to and to surrender to repent um but it's when you realize that you know you know the um the saying from uh C.S. Lewis, who related uh, Aslan to you know God, he said he was a he was he was a good he was a good king, but he wasn't he wasn't safe. Right. Yeah. All right. But and those are all pieces that you need to have. Again, it's a measure of balance. Yeah. Measure of, of it really is an issue of the heart, and some people are still walled off because of whatever. Yeah. You know, that, that book I'm reading about uh, the seeking the light and easy bur um, burden bearers, burden bearers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it talk, you know, it talks about that. The section I'm in is it talks about was as a child, maybe you experience something dreadful, and so you t you escape back into a safe place inside yourself, and you build a wall. Yeah. And you don't want to expose that. You don't want to get involved in all the singing and all the joy and all that kind of stuff. You look mm. at it and you say, "Oh, yeah, but that's not for me," mm. because I I can't I can't trust that that if I, I open up and and give of myself, then I'm not going to get slapped down. Mm. So you know, there's a lot of healing, like you said, Mark, with the the people that you work with and and celebrate freedom. There's there's a lot of healing that has to happen, but it just it's not going to happen all together. Oh, it's yeah. going to happen piece by piece, but you got to be willing to let those pieces get healed. Yeah, and and there's more than one tool or one way to to find healing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the launch team for uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Marcus Warner's new book, Breakthrough, that's going to be released soon. And uh, within that book, he he talks about the need for knowing who you are in Christ. So you need discipleship. We need community um, yeah. you know, where we can come together with people. We need to go to the Lord in like healing prayer. Um, we have to take care of our bodies, um, you know, and we have to, you know, work on our attachments to one another. And, you know, when we're acting in fear towards one another instead of joy, it's a different dynamic in our in our relationship. And it all comes through and like what, you know, just because one of these things might be the answer for for somebody in spiritual warfare um doesn't mean you know that's the because we find something that works and tend to go that's what you need brother and that's all you need well i'd say yes and then amen and then some more and and because like i said there's more and there's some more and there's more um myself um i had to know who i was in christ i had to know the word um 
I had to clean up my act in terms of my body, uh, you know, free it from the alcohol and drugs, uh, from the bad food, uh, relationally, yeah. had to know what, you know, not living in fear of someone in a relationship was like and living in joy instead. Um, and to, to be trusting and, and honest and to not for nothing, deal with the demons, uh, deal, yeah. you know, take, take the ground that the demons had and cancel it, yeah. and, you know, cast them out. And then to go into prayer, um, uh, with a, with a prayer minister and have the, you know, have the Holy spirit, have Jesus come into some of those memories of the past and reveal himself and, and things. And so there's, there's uh, lots and lots and lots of ways to grow and yeah. lots of way to experience yeah. breakthrough. And it's not one or the other. It's all of the above. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't, that's why I'm so against people who are like limited or think they've attained something well, like there's, there's, there's the Lord is, is, Boy pretty big and he's calling you in all different directions to, to, right, to right. so what what you're expressing and expressing well is a holistic approach yes god is interested in our whole self mm -hmm. and there's a lot of process involved in uh bringing us to a place of maturity or in in the whole growth trajectory and something else that you mentioned in your discourse uh back in the middle there that I want to emphasize is that the fear of the Lord should never in inhibit or come against our trust of the Lord. You know, uh, trust is the pillar of a love relationship. And we must trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean on our, our, on our own understanding, of course. So um, these are, are some of the components of the, the balanced uh, Christian life that we're advocating for. Mm -hmm. And so... I was uh, noticed studying this out that predominantly elsewhere in scripture, particularly in the Psalms, uh, joy. Dead, it's head. dead head. It's okay. supposed to be head. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sweetheart. My typos. Um, the joy of the Lord is associated with victory over enemies. And uh, Psalm 27 6 says, And now. My head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Mm -hmm. There I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as we've already mentioned, singing is a powerful piece to the puzzle here in expressing our joy. Uh, and it's the overflow of our joy. Use your voice. There is a power in in proclamation and confession that's just basic Derek prince right there yeah um there is power in that uh, we emphasize and repeat often god spoke the universe into existence and the power of life and death is in the tongue the scripture mm -hmm. uh proclaims and so we can call those things that be not as though they be mm -hmm. we speak them and there is a powerful dynamic in that. We may not always understand it. We might not always see instantaneous results. Um, but that's not an excuse to repeal or recede from that practice. Mm -hmm. And singing, it, it used to be an old uh, Protestant expression uh, that uh, singing is praying twice, right? Mm -hmm. People have said that. And so singing is is an important uh, uh peace to um, expressing joy. In the New Testament, we read in 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, receive, uh, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I would submit that this joy is associated with the victory over sin through Christ's sacrificial death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. um, we can't uh, <clears throat> get away from, and, and never should get away from, uh, our victory in Christ and our victory march, and and that has uh, and and that has a component of joy that should never dissipate because this is an eternal victory. This is the victory that's going to usher us in mm. to uh, the fullness of of the presence of God, and and carry us through uh, the remainder of time that we have here in, in the terra firma or in this in, in this tent in, in this uh, very frail and um you know uh, 
laden with all kinds of problems tent that we that we live in mm -hmm. uh, in in previous pentecostal generation we used to say too much spirit and not, not enough word and you blow up too much word and not enough spirit and you dry up yeah. and i believe that the same uh, uh tension is expressed here to some degree between fear uh giving way to wisdom and joy uh on account of an experience and and so uh again we advocate our mantra here <laughs> is balance uh, since both of these motions are expressed in scripture in in you know no short form they should be embraced and appropriately in an appropriate measure with uh, the circumstances yeah. we are no more called to a constant uh, pollyannaish rejoicing or uh than we are to a constant trembling and fear mm -hmm. uh, in our opening verse we can bring we can see how it brings both of these before the lord in righteous harmony mm -hmm. uh and and so uh, again we're 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 not advocating for just everything is peaches and cream and we're always singing and dancing and doing cartwheels uh, because, really, you know, right. when you have a broken leg, cartwheels are, are, are difficult. There's a difficulty factor there mm -hmm. and it hurts. Uh, life can be painful. And there is a uh, when we when we read the scripture that says rejoice with those that rejoice and mourn with those that mourn. The presupposition is that there are some who are mourning. Mm -hmm. there, there are some believers who are, are mourning in, in harsh circumstances. And that's the time and the place to, to come alongside them mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. listen and listen mm -hmm. and listen, yeah. you know, and not try to cheer them up and, and come crashing in with the scripture like all things happen for good for those who love the Lord. Let's be cautious with, uh, the, with that. Let's be, let's, let's be circumspect in ourselves and aware of what's going on around us. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be kind to someone who's going through a hard time. Yeah. Um, there was a time when Arthur was having some real problems with his back and it was a struggle for me to try and, and figure out what we're doing. And one Sunday, you know, he's, he's really in a bad place. We have to go to the emergency room and I'm supposed to be teaching Sunday school. So I have to go over to the, the pastor's house and, drop off all the information so that they can teach get somebody else to teach the Sunday school class. And I, you know, I just break down in tears and the pastor, I, you know, bless his heart. He starts giving me some scripture and something. And I turned to him and I said, if you talk to me one more time, I'm going to punch you <laughs> because I, you know, I just, there's a point where you just get to a place where you know I'm grieving, I'm hurting. I'm, I just don't need the Christian ease. Yeah. I just need you to put your arm around me and say, it's going to be okay. And send me off to take care of whatever it is. And you take care of my other piece. And, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. But sometimes people don't need your words. They just need you to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and we all make mistakes in that regard, right. in distinguishing what's the right thing to do, because we want to bring comfort, you know, to one another. Sure. That's, sure. that's. Uh, and he did. And, you know, and I apologize and repented for saying <laughs> Punch and him. she didn't punch and him. I, punch I just want to, we just really want to say that she didn't punch didn't him. him. But <laughs> the point is, is that sometimes you just need to have some compassion. And it's interesting because when I first sat down, the Lord sent me to a place in, in limitations, which, of course, if you want to read about sorrow and things not working out well, but sticking to the course, yeah. read limitations. But mm -hmm. anyway, in limitations, um, Chapter 3, verses 21 to 27. I have marked, I have underlined, I have circled, I have dated, I have words next to it, but it goes like this. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Right. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yeah. The Lord is my portion, is my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Yeah. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So, you know, there's a point where you just have to recognize that you may be going through something, yeah. whether it's really super joyful or it's super sorrowful. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. God's patient and he's waiting and you need to include him in the whole process. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. You can't divorce yourself from that situation. And we're going to ebb and flow in the, that understanding. Uh, we, we really are. Uh, and we have no, to, our, 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 of our study last week we talked about how our success, our sense of success is really rooted in Christ. He is the qualifier. He qualifies us for success. He's the qualifier in that, that equation. We're successful because of Christ and because of our relationship with him. Uh, but that doesn't always that you know that doesn't always permeate into our emotional life because right. with fear and joy we're talking about our emotional life yeah. and um, it doesn't always uh, make its way into that and mm -hmm. lamentations is a great book in terms and it shouldn't be avoided no. in, because in in terms of <clears throat> saying that there is there is a time and place for lament you know there is a time and place for us to uh, um, uh, with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. which happens to be broken. acceptable before God. Broken a, 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 a broken heart and a contrite spirit are, are acceptable before the Lord. You know, that's the exact sacrifice that's acceptable before God. And so <clears throat> uh, our counsel here is, is not to walk in denial of these uh, uh, emotions, these uh, emotions that God, as, as I said, uh, are... Uh, of consequential to God because he created us uh, such we've always got to bring our emotional life into alignment with God's word, mm -hmm. but understanding that this is uh, something that, that uh, is, is part and parcel of our shape of our form of the way he created us. And uh, it will dovetail into our purpose as well. And that uh, these, this is a, a, a good dimension of of the abundant life that, that Jesus has promised us, but let us consider, you know, each 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 one, when the wave of fear or the wave of joy comes upon us, uh, mm -hmm. to understand its its source. You know, obviously, fear that is is uh, uh, comes from Satan is uh, of no value to us and and can be rebuked and can be cast off. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and mm -hmm. we need wisdom, especially since we've, you know, eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We need to, we need that godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. any closing remarks, uh, Mark? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, basically, I just, um, I think we can't learn enough the uh, uh, the wisdom to be quick to hear and slow to speak, or. Uh, and right. to remember and one thing that's been impressed upon me lately um is the fruit of the spirit of gentleness and it's, it's what i forget about uh so much and um a lot of the stuff that's coming before me is about speaking rashly or or or, or mm. you know giving quick responses and uh because of I've been rebuked. Uh, I've given quick responses. I've I've spoken in in what I thought was a humorous tone, and uh, yeah. it wasn't yeah. taken as a joke, you know. And right. sometimes we have to realize, as uh, you know, where we wh where we're coming from, and how our messages are being received aren't always the the same. And, yeah. Um, Correct. We got to be we got to be quick to listen and slow to speak sometimes, and just listen. And to be compassionate and gentle. So, because, you know, lamentations uh, are happening. People are hurting out there. And yeah. if we are too quick uh, to give an answer uh, when we could just be present, um, yeah. you know, we could we could shut off an opportunity to, uh, to help somebody, you know. So, that's it. Amen. That's great. That's that's well said. Uh, that's a big one, actually, Mark. That's a very big one, especially in a culture that is so hyper com comedic, right? We we mm -hmm. always got to come charging in, cheer somebody up, come charging in with a joke, come charging in with uh, something that is going to change the atmosphere. And like, why? Uh, let's move through the atmosphere. Let's embrace and see what's going on and apply some discernment before mm -hmm. we uh, um, open our mouths. <laughs> <laughs>
All well, right. Mark, why don't you close us out with some prayer and yeah. uh, we'll start yeah. our day trying to be joyful and <laughs> recognize true fear. All right. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today to consider the fear of the Lord and the joy of the Lord and um, and how they they teach us so much about you and um, they're still somewhat mysterious to us even after knowing you for so long. So, Lord, we just pray for you to, to be with us, to, to show us more, to how to be like you and how to do things your way and or how to express ourselves um, fully to to know you and to be known by you and to to help other people to know you um, when we just pray for your word your holy spirit and your word to go out today through the congregations on the earth through the pastors um, to teach wisdom um, to teach kindness and to teach love and to um give you praise through all the worship teams that will lift your your name and song lord we pray for the body of christ to wake up to to allow um their hearts to be expressed um be it, yes. be it, be it in fear or be it in joy to to know you not just intellectually but to enter in with their emotions and their and their and their bodies um to to surrender to you and your will um, and Lord, we pray for you to bless the body of Christ today to receive what you have um, to help us to grow into the people you made us to be. Um, mm -hmm. We thank you and we praise you and we love you. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes. All right. Well, uh, that, that's another study uh, for the from Bible study with the St. Cotties. Um, and the MT for Christ 24 7 podcast. Um, we invite everyone to subscribe to YouTube or wherever podcasts are listened to and to uh, check out our archives of studies and, uh, you know, to be encouraged and to give us feedback because uh, whenever we discover that someone's feeding, you know, uh, if someone's hearing us and listening to us, uh, it encourages us. Yeah. And uh, I was just uh, reached out to somebody you touched last year through our study with uh, Bonhoeffer, um, 40 days with Bonhoeffer, um, somebody in Norway uh, reached out to say hello and uh, to, wow. to give their thanks uh, for that study from last year. And so this year we'll, in a few days, Lent begins on, on Valentine's Day and yes. uh, on, the pod, yep. on the podcast we're going to be doing uh 40 days with uh, Martin Luther. Uh, so we'll be oh. looking through that devotional and uh, we'll see how that goes. And hopefully, awesome. the, people, hopefully the people in Norway like it. Uh, <laughs> but but we'll, well, we'll see. I think they want Bonhoeffer again, but uh, we're, we're going to go through something different. And uh, we just appreciate um, the feedback um, because it, this is really just my faith being expressed every day. Um, to, to give right. witness and glory to the Lord, and yes. if it encourages somebody else to discover their freedom and um, you know to encourage them in their walk, that's that's all. Yeah. What, what yep. Out. So, for Arthur, yeah. Suzanne, and myself, and my wife Tammy Lynn, we say thank you, and yeah. God bless you all. God bless. God bless.